Hello, my name is Andy Owen. I'm Subject Officer for GCSE Geography, WJC Educas. Spheres of influence is an overarching concept used in geography to describe a number of uh, uh, features of our environment. In this video, we'll look at the concept of spheres of influence and look at ways in which it could be applied to fieldwork in the cycle 2018 for GCSE Geography A and GCSE Geography B uh, fieldwork. As this slide suggests, uh, geographical features can have both good and bad impacts on their surroundings. It's a simple way of thinking about the sphere of influence. In a fieldwork inquiry about quality of life, we might typically be looking for the positive features that um, improve people's quality of life, things that are external to the home, things like a, an attractive urban park. And certainly a view across an urban park can d increase the desirability of a residential area causing house prices in the immediate area to rise. This is a simple example of a positive sphere of influence. And the screenshot on the right of this slide uh, shows a, a shot from Zoopla, uh, what they call their heat image, where the warmer colours show higher house prices. And the reddy orange colours in the middle of this image relate to the photograph on the left, the houses that overlooking Landaff Field, which is in the middle of Cardiff. Just as some features in our environment can create positive spheres of influence, then others create negative impacts uh, in the immediate area around them. And in an urban area, busy traffic can have negative impacts with its noise, the parking problems that it creates for local residents, and maybe safety issues for people trying to cross the road. These impacts, again, tend to be quite localised, so the sphere of influence is only quite small. And of course, those impacts may be different for different groups of people. So, for instance, a very young child or an elderly person that's disabled would find it much harder to cross this road than somebody who is uh, able-bodied. So spheres of, spheres of influence have... Uh, people have different perceptions of spheres of influence. The negative impacts created by busy traffic may be one factor that helps to depress house prices. And on this slide, you can see a screenshot from a DEFRA website at the top of the screen which shows noise levels uh, along a busy road, the A50, uh, in Stoke-on-Trent in the Midlands. The lower screenshot is again from Zoopla and the heat image here shows the cool blues along the A50 road indicating that house prices in that noisy neighbourhood are relatively low. I've already suggested that spheres of influence are sometimes quite limited in their extent. And this slide shows how spheres of influence tend to decay over space. So for something which might be a noise nuisance like a, a, a rowdy nightclub or a, a public house, the complaints about noise will be relatively localised to houses that are you know, within a very short distance. And as you get within you know, 100 metres of that um, that property, then the noise number of complaints will decline very rapidly. So spheres of influence decay, and things like a fast food restaurant, which might create some negative impacts for very localised neighbours, like the smell of cooking or the noise nuisance late in the evening, they'll be very localised. On the other hand, other features have much wider spheres of influence. A major airport, for example, with the noise of aeroplanes taking off and landing, can be heard over several square kilometres and may, may affect thousands of people. So this slide, again from the DEFRA website, shows ISO lines of noise levels around Birmingham International Airport. You'll notice that unlike the bell-shaped curve on the previous slide, these ISO lines are elongated. And that's obviously because it's noisier if you live underneath the flight path. And in this instance, Aircraft are taking off and landing from the northwest or the southeast. So houses to the northwest or southeast are going to be affected by that noise, and perhaps the house prices in those areas might be depressed slightly. So, so far we've seen that spheres of influence can be localised or a little bit bigger, but of course some spheres of influence are very large indeed. Large cities like London, for example, have all sorts of different kinds of spheres of influence, social, environmental, political and economic. And these different spheres of influence have different kinds of impacts on the area around the city, or its hinterland. 
For example, a large city will attract economic migrants. It may create atmospheric or river pollution. It may well influence patterns of commuting and therefore house prices in the area around the city. And of course, large cities like London and Cardiff stage major sporting and cultural events and these too can have spheres of influence. Global cities, of course, like London, have an international sphere of influence that through their political and economic influence. Retailing creates spheres of influence within our urban environments. There's a lot of talk at the moment about the death of the high street and whether that's related to uh, the rise of online shopping or maybe due to large retailers and their out-of-town stores. Certainly it's true that you know, opening a new out-of-town store can have an impact on neighbouring shops. This does create competition which lowers prices, which could be described as a positive local impact. But it may also lead to shop vacancies in our high streets, which obviously would be a negative local impact. Remember that a sphere of influence covers a geographical area and the impacts within that area. And in this case, the large out-of-town retailer may be impacting on other local shops. This is not quite the same as a shop's catchment area, which is a much simpler concept. Catchment area is simply the area from which the shop attracts its customers, whereas the sphere of influence is the area over which it exerts an influence, either positive or negative. So far we've focused on geographical features, and perhaps from seeing that you've seen some ideas for how you might begin to design a piece of fieldwork. But of course, events in our geographical environment also create spheres of influence whether they are sporting events, uh, music festivals like Glastonbury, or the types of sort of weekend carnivals and fairs that often occur during the summer and autumn months in our smaller towns and villages, like this one here in Bishop's Castle in Shropshire. For these types of events, the road needs to be closed, and this particular high street was closed for the whole weekend. That, of course, had a sphere of influence, relatively localised, with both good and bad impacts on people living in the town and businesses trading in the town. So, for example, local residents found it difficult to park their cars or get in and out of the town, and some businesses reported that profits went up, places like cafes and pubs and guest houses, whereas other businesses reported that business was down over the weekend. These are the sorts of things that a fieldwork inquiry could investigate. Obviously, larger events, like big sporting events, can create even larger spheres of influence. And the photograph here shows uh, the um, Principality uh, Stadium, or the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, which of course draws crowds from all over Wales and, at certain times, all around the world, for instance, for the Rugby uh, World Cup. These large events uh, will have a, a large economic and environmental impact on the area around them. And you could, for example, set up a transact away from the event to analyse the extent of the sphere of influence, looking at, for example, the positive impacts, things like increased trade for local pubs and cafes and hotels and bed and breakfasts, but also looking at the negative impacts, the extra traffic and the parking problems associated with it, or the increased prices in hotels compared to a normal weekend, and maybe the possible noise nuisance at the end of the event, litter or even antisocial behaviour as people are leaving the event. So far a lot of these slides have looked at um, spheres of influence in a urban or human context. But of course, features of the physical environment also create spheres of influence, impacts on their local environment. A major storm event, for instance, or a river flood, or coastal flooding, all have impacts on uh, the people and the economy that they affect. And these impacts can be mapped and their influence uh, will tend to decrease with distance. So, for example, in the screenshot here, you can see a satellite image of Shrewsbury with the River Severn flowing through it, and the dark blue areas are the areas that are vulnerable to flooding. Actual floods or perceived floods could be investigated through an inquiry, and one way you might want to do that is by setting up a transect at right angles to the river and mapping land uses and deciding whether or not there's been any land use zoning, uh, what properties are at risk of flooding, maybe asking uh, local residents, interviewing them about their experience of flooding in that area. 
So how far exactly did the flood extend, or how far might it extend, and do people feel at risk of flooding uh, within certain areas of Shrewsbury? Another practical example we could look at within the physical environment is to look at uh, honeypot sites and the effect of too many visitors, perhaps, visiting a rural honeypot site or an area of outstanding natural beauty. You could investigate the visitor impact on a landmark or a honeypot site and look at the spatial extent of the positive impacts, for example, by finding out where the visitors stay and where they spend their money. You might also look at the spatial extent of the negative impacts of those visitors, for example, by investigating the extent of footpath erosion or parking issues or litter. And again, you could use Transex to help investigate those ideas by looking at the extent of trampling at increasing distance from a car park or a visitor centre. This particular hillside is in South Shropshire, and although the footpath erosion at this point is quite extensive, it's close to the car park, and within a few hundred metres, that footpath uh, erosion is, is quite negligible. Um, notice at the bottom of the slide there, uh, we've indicated types of physical data and human data that you could collect. So within one fieldwork environment, you can actually tick off the requirement to collect both physical data and human data. We have prepared other CPD materials and videos about fieldwork, which you can find on our website. And if having looked at those, you still have any other questions, please feel free to contact me on this email address. Thanks for watching this video.